Hello everybody, it's us again, Phil the Storyteller. And Will, the music teacher. Well, the story today is from the Saxon times. The Roman Empire had fallen, and so had the structures that they had in England. London was kind of a ruined little town, and everybody tended to go back to the land to grow their own things. Now, one day, there was a serf. Now, a serf is like a slave and a servant together. And the serf, who was very poor, worked in a field for a man, the field owner, the farmer. And this time he had his mattock and he was digging up the field. Well, as he was digging up his field, he heard a and she thought, ooh, my, the blade of my mattock has hit something buried. So he got on his hands and knees and he began to dig. And he found a ring, a gold ring. So he dug more and more. Well, the more he dug, the more he revealed the ring was the rim of a cup, a gold cup. And he dug even more, even more, even more. And then he pulled it out of the ground, and it was a chalice, which is like a really, really, really expensive gold cup from the Roman times. Wow, he said, look what I found. Now the farmer, he came over and said, wow, you have found a chalice, and that chalice is mine. And the farmer grabbed hold of the rim of the chalice, and the serf, he grabbed hold of the other rim. And the farmer said, it's mine. And the man said, it's mine. 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 All day long, they had the chalice and they were pulling it from each other, and soon the sun was beginning to go down. Smine, smine, smine. And then the reeve came along, and the reeve was the kind of sheriff type of thing, and he said, now, uh, you two men are Idiots. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the chalice and tomorrow you are both going to go down to Londinium or London and there's a judge there. Take the chalice to the judge and he will say who it belongs to. Okay, all right. The reeve took the chalice and the two tired men went to bed. Well, when they woke up in the morning, they they went to the middle of the village and the reeve said, there's the chalice, you hold it, you hold it. Okay. And they walked to London. And as they walked to London, they still argued. Smite, 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 smite. When they got into London, they saw that the walls of London had crumbled. There were weeds growing out of the bricks. As they went into London, they saw all the magnificent palaces and houses. Well, their roofs had fallen in, the pillars had fallen, trees were growing out of their water tanks, and they made their way to the Basilica. The Basilica is the place where the Romans had justice delivered, and that's where the judge lived. So the two men went in to the Basilica.
Now the judge was a young judge. He was a young man and a very handsome man. And his dad, the old judge, stood behind him and said, My dear boy, you are now on your own. These are your judgments. Good, said the man. Okay, first case. Well, the farmer said, we found this chalice. Mines might take the chalice off them. The guard took the chalice. Well, the farmer said, we found, well, this chalice was found in my field. So it is my chalice. And the serf said, no, 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 the chalice, well, I found the chalice in his field, but because I found the chalice, it should be my chalice. Well, the judge looked at the two Egypts and said, okay, um, I can't rule on this. There's nothing in the book of law that says, if you own a field, the chalice is yours, or if you found it, the chalice is yours. So, I'm going to set you a riddle. Each of you answer these three questions. What is the swiftest thing in the world? What is the richest thing in the world? And what is the heaviest thing? In the world. And so the two men looked at each other. Whoever gave the best answers would get the chalice. So they went home. Now the farmer, he went home to his farmhouse and his wife was there. Oh wife, what am I going to do? What's the swiftest? What's the richest? What's the heaviest? And the wife said, well, it's good you came to me because you, men's brains are always in their wives' heads. So let me tell you, the swiftest thing in the world is your horse, the one outside, the one that run the ra won the race on the beach. Oh, yeah, said the farmer. Now, the richest thing in the world is the emperor in Constantinople. He's richer than anything. Oh, yeah. And the heaviest thing in the world is lead. You know what the Romans made their pipes out of? It's very heavy. It's lead. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I'm going to win the chalice, said the farmer. But the serf, he went home to his hut. And it was a very small, smelly hut. He was so sad, he could never guess the answers. But his daughter was there, and his daughter's name was Farida. And Farida said, Dad, I think I know the answers. <gasps> well, what are they? What are they? Well, let me tell you. The swiftest thing in the world is time. Because time never stops, and it goes faster and faster the older you get. Oh, yeah. Um, now, the richest thing in the world is the earth. Because every time you plant something, it gives back so much more than what you put in. And it always will. Oh, yeah. And Dad, remember when Mum died? Remember how you felt? The heaviest thing in the world is sorrow. Because it lies on the heart and pulls it down. Oh yeah! So the next day the next day they went back to the Basilica. The judge came out and said, okay, answers farmers first. Easy. Swiftest thing in the world, my horse. <laughs> Richest thing in the world, emperor in Constantinople. Heaviest thing in the world, lead. And the judge said, yeah, those are great answers. Well done. <laughs> what about you, surf? What do you say? And the surf said, well, the swiftest thing in the world is time. <laughs> what? 
said the judge. And um, the richest thing in the world is the earth, because it keeps giving us stuff. Oh. And the heaviest? Well, the heaviest thing in, in, the, in the world is sorrow. Well, said the judge, what wise answers. Um, uh, give me the chalice, and the chalice goes to you, sir. And the farmer had the hump, stamped his little foot and walked out. Well, the judge said to the sir, uh, come here, come here. So, did you think of all those things yourself? Oh, yes, sir. Are you sure? Oh, yes, sir. No one else helped you? Yes, sir. Who helped you? My daughter, sir. Well, your daughter? What's her name? So her name is Farida. She's very wise. Have her come and see me tomorrow. The next day, Farida put on her only dress, which was a green dress, and she brushed all the mud off it from working, and she did her hair to make herself look really nice to appear before the judge. She walked into the Basilica, and the judge, the young man, sat in his judge's seat and said, Oh my goodness, I can't help it. My heart is banging in my chest. Uh, good morning, you must be Farida. Uh, yes, Your Honour. Farida, you were very wise helping your father. Um, I wonder if you can be wise helping me as a test. I shall try, sir. Well, the test came quickly because two brothers came into the Basilica and they said, Your Honour, we have a problem. We're both twins, so we're exactly the same age and we don't know who came out first. But our father has died and our mother is no more. And we have to divide the land up. But the problem is, the land isn't all rich. Some is swamp, some is a horrible hill, some is a polluted river, but some is a beautiful fresh stream, some is beautiful woodlands, and some of the land is great grazing. And we don't know how to divide it up because, well, we keep arguing. Okay, said the judge. Uh, Farina, how would you solve this problem? And Farida thought and said, The best way to do it is this. You see the map of the land. One brother divides the map up. And then the other brother chooses which bit he wants. And the judge said, that's great, because the first brother has to divide the map equally because he doesn't get first choice. That's right, Your Honour. For either. You have judged well. Frida, I want you to come for a meal with my father, my mother and me. And the two brothers, they went out very happy. Frida, she had to borrow a nice dress from one of the ladies in waiting. And they went, uh, and she went and sat down at the table with the mother and father. Now, the mother and father were very polite to Frida, but at the end of the meal, father drew his son aside and said, Son, she's very wise, but she's very poor. She is the daughter of a serf. You cannot marry her. Oh, but sir, I love her. I love her. I want to marry her. Well, very well. Let's see how wise she is. Here, let me whisper you another riddle. And if she can solve this, you can marry her. evening, Farida and the judge walked on the walls of old London, and the judge said, Farida, 
I love you, but we cannot get married unless you answer these three riddles. Oh, what are they? She said, well, tomorrow you have to come to see me in the Basilica riding a horse, but you are not allowed to ride a horse. You have to come to see me in the Basilica fully clothed, but completely naked. You, when you see me in the Basilica, you have to give me a gift. But you must never give me that gift. Oh, Farida, she thought about it for a while, and she walked home. And the next day, the judge was there. He was waiting for her. The whole of London knew what the riddle was, and they waited, waited to see if she would come. The judge was waiting in the basilica. All the crowd was there. And then he heard the crowd roar and laugh. Farida, she came around the side of the storage huts and in front of the basilica, the judge saw. She was riding a horse, but the horse was so small that she stood on either side of the horse and walked without sitting on the horse. She had to come fully clothed and completely naked, and he saw she was wearing a fishing net. And then she came up to him, and she, in her hand, said, I have a gift for you. Opened her hands, and a dove flew out, and the judge said, You have given me a gift, but you didn't give me a gift. Oh, Farida, we can get married. And so they got married. And on their wedding night, the judge said, you must promise me one thing. You are a woman, so you're not as good as a man. They used to think like that in the olden days. And if we let them, they'll still think like that. So you cannot interfere with my judgments. Is that clear? And she said, yes. That is clear. Well, the very next day, um, the judge had a very difficult case. Two men came in to see him. One man said, Your Honour, I own a horse. And this man and I got together because he owns a cart. So we hitched my horse to his cart. And we filled the cart up with turnips uh, to feed the people of London. But as we were going to London, it started to rain and it rained so heavily that my horse was in serious difficulty because my horse was pregnant. And so I got the horse down under the cart and the horse gave birth to a baby horse, a foal. Now the foal belongs to me. And the other man said, the cart owner, No, my lord, the foal belongs to me. Why? said the judge. Because it was born under my cart, and therefore it belongs to me. Hold on, said the judge. I'll get the book of law. So we got the book of law and looked through it and saw the law. And the law said, and this is what the judge said, anything born under one man's roof belongs to that man. And I say this, the cart was the man's roof. The foal was born under the cart. So the foal doesn't belong to the man who owns the horse. The foal belongs to the man who owns the cart. Farida, she wasn't in there at the time. She was walking towards the basilica when she saw the man who owns the horse coming out. 
and the man was crying, and Freed said, what's the matter with you? And he said, that judge, that stupid judge, that foolish judge, my husband, oh my, uh, yes, yes, the judge. Well, the judge has made a wrong decision. My, my horse gave birth to a foal, and he gave it to the man who owns the cart. And he told Farida the whole story. And Farida said, well, what you must do is this. Get a three-legged stool, get a bucket full of water, get a fishing rod, and do this. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Well, at the end of the day, the judge came out of the basilica on his way home. And he saw the horseman. The horseman was sitting in the middle of the street. He was sitting on the three-legged stool. In front of him was a bucket full of water. And he was fishing in the bucket of water. Now the judge said, ha ha, you'll never catch any fish. If from that bucket of water, why are you fishing there? And the man turned to the judge and said, I have more chance of catching a fish from this bucket than a cart has of giving birth to a horse. <coughs> oh, said the judge. I see. What you say is logical. Did you make that up yourself? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Are you sure? No. Who helped you? Your wife. Well, the judge was so angry. He stomped home. He came into the house and he said, Frida, you promised me you would not interfere with any of my judgments. It breaks my heart to say this, Frida. But I divorce you. <gasps> she said, what? I'm sorry, Farida. I divorce you. Just go. Go. Look at our house. Look at all the lovely things. Take anything, anything you like. Take the thing you love the best and leave. Farida opened the door and went back to her hut with her father. And she said, Dad, you owe me. And then she got hold of the man with the bucket and the three legged stool and said, You, sir, you owe me. And then he, he, she got hold of the two brothers who'd solved the problem of their land. You two, you owe me. At that night, they got torches and they left her hut and they walked into London and they went to the judge's house. Farida said, Shh. She opened the door and then said to the four men, upstairs, quietly. They went up the stairs, and then she said, he's sleeping in the bed. Each one of you, go on each corner of the bed and lift it up, but don't wake him. So they lifted up the bed, and they went downstairs. Well, the next morning, the judge woke up. Oh, my heart is so broken because she has gone. I have forced her to go. I have, whoa, where am I? This is my bed, but this isn't my house. This is Farida's hut. What am I doing in Farida's hut? Farida, what am I doing here? And Farida looked at him and said, well, I'm doing what you asked. You said, I should take the thing I love the most. And I love you the most. Well, the judge again came to the conclusion that his brains were in his wife's head. And from then on, Frida helped with all his judgments. And he was renowned as a fair and a just judge. And that is the end of the story. Well, thank you.
you, Will. Thank you, Phil. Thanks. A lot of wisdom in those old tales, isn't there? Well, they loved old uh, riddles, uh, uh, Saxons, but they also loved their music. And see some of the instruments Will was playing, like the drum and the uh, cymbals. Saxons used to play those instruments. But it's time for us to say goodbye now. So it's goodbye from me, Phil the Storyteller. And goodbye from Will, the music teacher. Bye now.